They thought the nukes were just for the lab, but they didn't realize that the whole area had been bombed. On satellite surveillance, there were constant flashes of white light, followed by a loss of connection, the world seemed to fall silent at that moment. Some of the survivors were turned into ashes without even knowing what happened. Now, only Roberta, 10K, and Doc are left in Squad X, uncertain if they can escape. The instigator of this disaster, Murphy, is also on the run. After peeling off his skin, he turned a blue-black color, looking more like a zombie. On the other hand, Corian thought it impossible to escape the blast radius and chose to hide in an abandoned refrigerator. Just then, a nuclear missile aimed at the laboratory descended, whitening the surrounding sky. 10K turned to see a mushroom cloud slowly rising behind them. Those who understand nuclear explosions know the real danger is not from the epicenter, but the ensuing shockwave and radiation, which can destroy everything. Corian, hiding in the fridge, realized how foolish his act was as the fridge tumbled around, eventually blowing its door off, and the nuclear radiation corroded his body like sulfuric acid. Far in the Arctic, Citizen Z felt extremely guilty, believing his incorrect information caused all this. Just as he was self-blaming, a nuclear bomb detonated near the Arctic. The base's automatic defense launched an intercepting missile, the two beams collided under his astonished gaze. Worse still, although the explosion center was high in the sky, the ground was still impacted, all windows in the house shattered, and the covering snow was blown away. He blanked out for several seconds before regaining his senses, then looked up to see the airplane previously covered in heavy snow. Under the shockwave, the airplane was revealed again, and the zombies inside began to wake up, and on Roberta's side, they're driving the car, racing against death, continuing like this, they will eventually die. Luckily, there was a tunnel at the intersection, whether they would survive depended on fate. After an unknown period, Roberta opened her eyes, feeling sore all over. It took her a few seconds to recall what happened before she passed out. Fortunately, the tunnel withstood the impact. The car was merely flipped by the blast wave. She and 10K suffered only minor cuts and bruises. However, old Doc's shoulder injury still made him howl in pain. When they saw the outside scene, they were stunned. Black snowflakes were floating in the sky. Roberta explained that this is not a natural phenomenon, but rather the ashes from the nuclear explosion mixed with radioactive materials. On the other side, a figure crawls out of the rubble of the lab. Incredibly, Cassandra was still alive. In the Arctic, zombies emerged from the thawing plane. Citizen Z looked grim. Part of the base's walls was damaged. If these zombies were not cleared, he couldn't live in peace. He aimed at the first zombie and fired, hitting it. But that was just luck. Although he worked for the military, he was just a technician and not skilled in combat. Citizen Z fired several shots but failed to hit any zombies again. Slowly, the zombies disappeared from his sight. All entering the house, he cursed and then rushed in after them. He must eliminate the zombies, but they had already scattered without a trace. Citizen Z ran to the innermost house before he heard some noise, which seemed to be getting closer to him. His shooting was really terrible. At that moment... A zombie outside, hearing the noise, also rushed over. He tried to pull out the pistol from his pocket, but it got stuck due to his nervousness. He could only run into the house. Citizen Z reached the communications room but unexpectedly tripped over a fallen beam and fell to the ground. The zombie followed closely and pounced on him. He breathed heavily. Since the apocalypse, Citizen Z had been living in the Arctic and never encountered real zombies. He finally understood the hardships of the survivors outside. But he had no time to reflect as there were still zombies roaming. He adjusted his mood and moved everything around to isolate the room, hoping it would block the zombies. After doing all this, he sat down in front of the computer again. The radio was still working. The mission to save the world must continue. He spoke into the Mac wind. This is Citizen Z broadcasting to all channels. This is very urgent. Very urgent. It's a critical moment for the survival of humanity. I need you to find a person. He's the only one so far who's been bitten by zombies and is still alive. His blood contains antibodies that can be used to create a vaccine. If anyone sees him, please escort him alive to the disease control laboratory in California. While Citizen Z was speaking, noise came from outside again. Definitely zombies. No doubt these were empty promises. The government was almost non-existent. But to save the world, he had to lie. And the zombies were getting closer. Today might really be his end. Also, because of Citizen Z's broadcast, almost all the survivors knew about Murphy. They all saw Murphy as prey, eager to find him quickly. Meanwhile, 
Murphy parked the van outside a clothing store because he was naked and needed to find some clothes. Do you remember that charity sisterhood? Mac, who had been trying to see Addie outside the door, suddenly saw flames soaring in the valley and no one guarding the gate. So he drove inside. To his surprise, that beautiful place was now just a pile of ruins. Addie is sadly killing her sisters with a wolfsbane. The once lovers finally met again. Mac's leg was still not healed. Limping as he walked, they looked at each other, at a loss for words. Tears were in Addie's eyes. Not sure if it was for the sisters or guilt towards Mac. It turns out the destruction here wasn't due to the nuclear explosion, as it was too far to affect this place. It's because of Sam, who went to Salt Lake City to find his dad. Sam, being smart, quickly realized the truth. He returned to burn down the valley and release the zombie bear, leading to the demise of the Charity Sisterhood. Addie survived thanks to her apocalyptic survival experience. Mac shook his head, not wanting to hear more, knowing what Addie would say. Still brainwashed by Helen, during this time, Mac's heart was deeply hurt, and he had come to understand a lot. Mac had wanted to leave early to find Roberta and the others but stayed out of reluctance, seeing Addie unchanged. He felt there was no need to stay. Just as he was about to reach the car, a roar from the zombie bear came from the woods, and his heart softened. If Addie rejected him again, he wouldn't wait as he had before. Now, Addie had no choice. The charity sisterhood was gone, and all she had left was Mac. But could this couple return to what they once were? After they left, a figure emerged from the woods. It was Serena, who had been involved with Murphy, now visibly pregnant. Murphy, with headphones on, listens to music, followed by a group of zombie minions serving him. Since he peeled off his skin, it's as if he's been reborn. Even able to directly control the zombie's actions, he leisurely picks out clothes, tossing the ones he likes onto his minions. Half an hour later, he had changed into a fashionable outfit, wearing a hat and a gold watch, as if he were a big shot. Suddenly, a fully armed man arrives. He had heard the broadcast about Murphy and was searching for clues, never expecting to actually find him. Murphy is somewhat panicked, fearing the man might shoot him on the spot, but he tries to remain calm and asks what he wants. The man doesn't answer but pulls out a shotgun from his back. Then, he takes out a voice recorder and plays it. It's Citizen Z's bounty announcement. Looking for someone named Murphy, emphasizing his appearance and ability to control zombies. So, the man is almost certain that this zombie-looking guy is his target. Just to be sure, he orders Murphy to take off his clothes to check for bite marks. Murphy had no choice but to pull open his shirt to reveal the nearly healed wound. Murphy can't help but find it amusing. Even Squad X couldn't get him to California. So how could this man? The man was laughed at by the brain anger raised his hand and fired a bolt of electricity directly Murphy bared his teeth and lost the ability to resist. He moves closer, saying, You're my prey now, I won't kill you, but because of your words, I'll torture you severely. Just then, Cassandra arrives. Having found the place through her connection with Murphy, Murphy breathes a sigh of relief and stands up slowly, expressing his happiness at seeing Cassandra again, but something seems off with Cassandra as she suddenly pounces on him. It's clear that although Cassandra survived, she now only recognizes Murphy and treats him as family. Murphy enjoys this adoration. Even picking out a trendy outfit for Cassandra, the man who tried to rob him becomes a new minion. Next, the plan is to find a new place and gather more followers for enjoyment. Meanwhile, Roberta and her group struggle to move forward. Their situation is dire, having not eaten for two days. Moreover, Doc is injured and can hardly walk. He has repeatedly asked his companions to leave him behind, but Roberta refuses to do so. How could she abandon her friend? She gives the last bit of water to Doc. After some thought, Roberta said, 10k, you stay and take care of document. I'll go out and look for food. If I don't return in 48 hours, you'll have to fend for yourselves. Having said this, she walked off into the distance, hoping for a bit of luck. Five hours later, Roberta was still struggling forward. The journey was through forests and wastelands, with no signs of human habitation, let alone finding food. She thought about resting for a while before continuing but was too tired. She lay down, feeling like giving up. The thought of dying from starvation, and not wanting to become a zombie, forced her to sit up again. Roberta took out her revolver, not wanting to end her life this way unless absolutely necessary. Just as she closed her eyes, preparing to pull the trigger, she faintly heard a cry for help. Roberta was sure she hadn't misheard. Not far away, a girl was surrounded by zombies, desperately trying to keep them at bay, but it was only a matter of time before she would be devoured. Just when the girl was out of options, a long knife pierced through a zombie's head. Roberta had arrived, 
her haggard face fierce, the battle continued, and the pistol in her hand seemed magical. Roberta's combat style was decisively ruthless, the girl turned to look at her savior, never having seen such a powerful survivor, taking down eight or nine zombies alone, after dealing with all the zombies, Roberta, already weak, collapsed, I don't know how long it took for her to open her eyes again, and she hadn't felt this comfortable for a long time, Roberta looked around carefully, realizing she wasn't in heaven but in a strange room, feeling sore all over, her pistol and knife were gone, probably taken by the girl who had brought her here, but cautious, she picked up a candlestick from the table as a weapon and slowly investigated, the room was quiet, only the sound of a kettle boiling water, she relaxed upon seeing the girl, realizing she was safe, a kind family of four lived secluded in the woods, but Roberta wasn't concerned about that, her eyes were drawn to the food on the table, and she started eating voraciously, forgetting her manners, on the other hand, Mac and Addie had been trying to find Roberta and the others by radio, but it's been two days and they can't reach them, even the Citizen Z at the North Pole Station has been lost, they could only follow some traces, suddenly, Mac heard a noise from the ruins and pulled out his gun to investigate, a zombie suddenly charged at him from behind, he reacted in time and shot the zombie, but another one sneak attacked, it's worth noting that the zombies seem to have developed basic intelligence, Addie, standing by, hesitated to shoot as she couldn't aim properly at the zombies, the one who fired the gun was 10k, they had been hiding there, too, and hearing the fight, they looked over, not expecting to see two old friends, meanwhile, Roberta was gradually getting to know the family through chatting at the dinner table, it was already night, so she had to stay over, the next day, the male homeowner showed Roberta a map, marking the radiation contaminated areas, after expressing her gratitude, Roberta took the supplies from the homeowners and set off. Doc and 10K were still waiting for these life-saving supplies, but the journey back was equally long. According to the map, it would take at least two days. Five hours later, Roberta was struggling with the weight of the supplies. Fortunately, she no longer had to worry about food and water. Suddenly, she noticed a car at the end of the road. In the open area, there was nowhere to hide. Roberta prepared her gun, ready for anything, but when she recognized the people, a smile appeared on her lips, sometimes, fate is really unpredictable, with Mac's car, she never had to walk again, in the evening, they finally arrived at their destination, they came here because Citizen Z mentioned in the broadcast that Murphy was nearby, they hadn't walked far when they saw other survivors coming and going, obviously hunting for Murphy, Roberta felt they couldn't keep searching blindly, they needed to think like Murphy, they all agreed it made sense, walking along, 10K asked Mac to stop the car because he saw a place. If they thought like Murphy, he might be here. Everyone saw it was a disreputable place. Indeed fitting Murphy's mindset. Their guess was right. Murphy was indeed inside and had gathered a new group of followers. 